It's Madden NFL 24. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Niners and the Browns coming up next. The kicker, Dustin Hopkins, set to get this one going. And off we go from Cleveland. Ray Ray McLeod to return. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. And they will be led out by their second-year quarterback. And you'd think as a young QB there'd be some nerves leading an offense out to start a game, but haven't seen any sign of them right now. And speaking with him earlier this week, sensed that the pressure wouldn't get to him. He feels comfortable being the face of this offense and shouldering the expectations on game day, even if he doesn't quite have the years of experience other quarterbacks do. What a pickup this man was last year. It's Christian McCaffrey. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Not a lot of running room there, not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. The tight end in motion right. Another run with McCaffrey on second down. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 13 yards there and a Niner first. Third and short, so didn't need much, but got a little extra on the backside. Nice run. Chewed up the yardage, didn't he? To me, that was offensive line with leverage, good blocking angles, taking on a stacked defensive front. And once they chopped that little hole in the beginning, he took it and rambled. And just the third play from scrimmage, wanted to avoid the three and out and did just that. Now this time they'll throw it. Here's Purdy. He'll get this out right here to McCaffrey. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that'll make it second down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. So he gets too far beyond the line, and that's an easy call for the official. Still second down. Purdy now on second down. Open man is Jerome Jennings. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 45-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. We got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice, sustained series to begin the game, and it will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, 
you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. On first down, Purdy. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an outer boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Purdy will set up to throw it here. And it's caught by Debo Samuel. Touchdown, San Francisco. An 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Niners get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. They got to love that. Nine play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. That means that they've described how the game's going to. And we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs. And I think they're going to at least take a look at this. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds. And obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Jake Moody now for the point after. And the 49ers grab a 7 to nothing lead. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception. So after the made field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. Taken at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. So here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski. And they will be led out by the youngster, the rookie, their QB. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment. Running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. On first down, Thompson Robinson. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. It's the former number four overall pick, Cleveland Furl, that got in there to bring him down. And they get to him right out of the gate. And this defense hoping that that's a harbinger of things to come. Yeah, when you give up a first play sack, makes your quarterback wonder if he's going to go to the sidelines and talk with his offense coordinator and head coach and say, hey, you know that game plan we put together? We might need to change it right now. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. The throw over the middle, taken in. A nice pick up there, 19 yards. And they're set up better for third. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back. But now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Thompson Robinson. A quick throw there is incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. On fourth down, Corey Bajorquez gets set to punt for Cleveland. Back deep, Ray Ray McLeod. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And that will come the offense as they take over.
The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And he's going to be down at the 35. Gain of seven. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. From the 35, here's second and three. Again, they run again. It's McCaffrey. Oh, look at the juke. And at the 42-yard line here and brought down there. 50 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. Well, they're making a real first-quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old-school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, sit, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Final 30 seconds of this first quarter, and it's been a quarter dominated by the guys with the football. A second down throw for Purdy. And throws it on the move, but can't connect as that falls incomplete. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Purdy. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. It was Miles Garrett that time who got in there and brought him down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Well, that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Moore, the man in motion. Now the NFL's third leading rusher last year. It's Nick Chubb. And he's going to have a Browns first down as the tackle made here at the 36. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. First and 10, Thompson Robinson. Flush to his right. And this turns into a nice game with a slide at the end. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Hadn't met a quarterback yet that didn't enter the league with a massive chip on his shoulder. If he wasn't a first-round pick, they want to show the league that they made a big mistake. Determined to get the first down there, no hesitation at all to tuck it and go. I bet he would have tried to run through their entire defense if it meant reaching that marker. Now here's a throw. It's complete. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Mm -hmm. 
So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 34. They go up the middle with Chubb, and nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Thompson Robinson here from the gun. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. Seventh play of the drive, fourth coming on third and eight. Play action, now Thompson Robinson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 19. 13 yards on his first catch, it's a first down as well. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field, right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. 13-yard gain yet again, just like last play. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. The DTR going to throw it here. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out high. They expected it and got there and popped it free. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. To throw is DTR. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. Third and goal now, mere inches from Pater. Thompson Robinson throwing here. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Talon Peoples Jones. Tying this ball game. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw what a touchdown strike. There you go. That's my man in concert. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. McLeod now on the return. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. On first down, this is McCaffrey, and he is going to lose yardage here. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, you've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Throwing here, Purdy. 
eluding the pressure right. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit. And he gets a small gain on the play. Purdy with it on third and long. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing the best coverages on third down. So far, only about one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. Now Thompson Robinson will go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 37-yard line. Throwing, Thompson Robinson. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. They'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Thompson Robinson to throw on first down. That's complete to Peoples Jones. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? He scored their touchdown earlier. This had a chance to be another. This secondary scrambled for answers, looking at each other, trying to figure out who is going to put the clamps on this guy because right now, He's absolutely shredding them. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. And once more, it's Thompson Robinson. They're throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far, even backed up late. They're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll try the draw now with Chubb. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. Third and four. Thompson Robinson will look to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And the Browns are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime.
Thompson Robinson now to throw. And that's going to be caught for the Browns. Touchdown. Amari Cooper in the final seconds of the first half. And the Browns have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. That is a near-perfect end-of-half drive right there. And we've seen that many times from the best in the league. But do you really expect to see it done that well by a rookie? And how about the timing? Finishing it almost near the zeros, as you said, right at the end of the half. Great momentum to carry into the locker room. Extra point good by Hopkins. And that makes the score 14-7. So six seconds, all that remains of this first half as the kick is away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. He'll take the knee in the final couple seconds. We'll tick by in this first half. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you two in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, this Coach, has certainly thanks. been a fun yeah, one to watch so far. To we knew this was going to be a battle, what's been a we have not been disappointed. Battle to this this point. is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. Touchdown ball game, 14-7. Our scores, we get back at it on EA Sports. From his end zone, here comes Jerome Ford. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. This offense set to begin the third quarter, and Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead, and they've got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also, they've had some success in their passing game, so probably an empty box establishing the run. They're on pace for fewer than 100 yards in this one, so now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game and down the stretch, being able to be balanced, either throw it or run it, and try and win this ball game. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. They run it again with Chubb. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Third and two. And Chubb try the middle here. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. 44 yards now on the ground at just seven carries. Chubb producing on that run, and he produces year after year for the Browns. Third in the league with over 1,500 yards in 2022. He quietly is in the top 20 all-time in both yards and touchdowns in a player's first five seasons. 
On first down, they'll run with Chubb to about the 40-yard line. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second and six. A give running right is Chubb. They find some open field here. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45 yard line. A good play there as the Browns strike for 16 in the first down. A good run there on right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009 2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. They're able to break through that initial contact and winds up getting about three there. It's second down. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. What we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete. And I think he was a little surprised to see the ball sitting out there like that. That's a ball he had a chance to come away with, but it winds up an incomplete pass. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Out of the gun, Thompson Robinson. He's got his target. That's complete. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 26. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board. Those are the plays they need to continue to convert. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. From the gun, it's Thompson Robinson. And that one to the right side and incomplete. A great job defensively taking away his receivers. And he was forced to put that one into Lake Erie. But that's what good quarterbacks do. They don't take unnecessary chances if they don't have to. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Thompson Robinson now. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. now to kick it off. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as these guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. And a short pickup to about the 25. 
feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. From the 25, here's second and six. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The 71 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Now Samuel. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Denzel Ward, the number four pick in the 2018 draft, making the tackle from his corner spot. From the 48-yard line, here's the second down at six. This is Samuel. Nifty move. He gets away from one. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. McCaffrey on the counter. And he'll be taken down after a decent gain, and that will bring us to the end of this third quarter of play. Three quarters in the books. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's 49er football, but some ground to cover. They find themselves behind as we hit the fourth and final quarter. Here's a second and five. Purdy now to throw. That's over the middle and caught by Ayuk. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 30. 11 yards for number 11. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle, that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. That run wasn't a big breaker, but I don't think the guys on offense mind very much. They've got a nice drive going, and they might just be luring the defense in a little bit. They could probably come back with a play action, maybe go over the top. But right now, on this drive, their playbook is open. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Oftentimes, we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they are able to stop it, but he does take it all the way to the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there, and for the offense, they're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. McCaffrey will get into the end zone for a 49er touchdown. Boy, 
we talk a lot about Christian McCaffrey and what he can do in the open field, and it's easy to gloss over how tough he can be to stop near the goal line. And he shows you just how tough he is on that carry as he takes it into the end zone. Now Moody for the PAT. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled at the 15. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. That last touchdown has made this really tight. They're clinging now to this slim lead. What, the, geez, the second half, they only have a field goal. This offense needs to kick it into gear. And right now, I'm looking directly at the field general, at the quarterback, because to me, he's got to take over right now by word, pumping his team up, and then, of course, by deed with his play. My high school coach used to say that all the time. Laddie, take over by word and deed. And deed means action. Exactly. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll be stopped right at the 30. On a play that started back at the 15, they pick up 15. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Thompson Robinson. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. Normally, you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. Here's second and ten. Up the middle, it's Chubb. And he's going to have a Browns first down as the tackle made about the 40 feet yard line. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you've got to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be here. We're not going to throw it here. And just eat up that crowd. And if you have the ball, they can't score. 109 yards rushing for the Dallas. He has been tremendous all day long. That carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Javon Hargrave, the former Eagle, there on the stop. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down, stay in bounds, keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on because that's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven-on-seven seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes you just try to find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. 
Now they return to the ground game. Chubb. And a good physical run that time. He's going to wind up gaining five on that one. Good game there on first down. And keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front. Good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Now Thompson Robinson. And that's going to be caught by Peoples Jones. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. On the bootleg, here's Thompson Robinson. Out left side here to Bryant. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. From the gun, it's a give to Chubb. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. They'll run with Chubb. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The lone man in the backfield here is Chubb on second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. And now the Niners going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The San Francisco defense trying to hold tough again. This is third and goal. Chubb. They push forward, but I don't think it's enough. He's going to be about a yard short. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to swell the lead to six. Hopkins kick is good. And they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction. All of a sudden, they're down. Three Hopkins now to kick it off. This fielded right at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So Purdy and the Niners down 20 to 14. 55 seconds remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down.
Here's Purdy to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Miles Garrett in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. Brandon, that's just football one-on-one. -on -one. If you're out of the pocket, you've got to get rid of the football in this situation. You cannot take a sack in a two-minute drill. Well, they'll come up now. This is second and long. Purdy to throw. He's going to let it fly. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Well, they need a touchdown, and here they're saying, we're not going to get it 10 yards at a time. They felt they needed to take a shot there to at least get them across the 50, but that one falls incomplete. This crowd turning up the decibel level. It's third and long. Throwing, Purdy. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Well, this is getting close to a no win situation now. They got one final shot. They're on their end of the field, and it's fourth and long. This might require a little extra razzle-dazzle to get it done. The decision made for them. They've got to go. It's fourth down. Purdy, big fourth down play. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And now possession will go over inside the 15-yard line. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. Well, you really can't ask for much more than what we just had here. Not only a close game that went down to the wire, Charles, but a clean one, too. No turnovers in this contest. And I think you're exactly right about that. To me, this is just a pair of offenses that's trying to find the slightest bit of separation from each other. And they were both hoping that the other side would make the big mistake first. But today, neither side made that mistake. And what we got, a very entertaining game throughout. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound as we say so long from Cleveland.